summer is here and I'd like to announce the beginning of the grilling series with this lovely grilled swordfish. Notice the burgundy color of the bloodline of my swordfish. If the bloodline is gray-brown, your swordfish has seen better days. Of course, it will turn gray after cooking, but should be deep red on raw fish. Other signs of freshness apply to all fish. The flesh should feel slightly damp and the smell should be almost imperceptible. The skin on swordfish is too tough to my liking and I cut it off. If you like it, you're welcome to keep it. Now let's cut the fish into portions. I like to divide my fish right down the bloodline. This way I can remove some of it. It is perfectly fine to eat, but tends to be a tad fishy. I don't dig out every last bit of it, just what's convenient. To help swordfish stay juicy, we need to salt it at least an hour before cooking. If it's more convenient, you can do it up to two days ahead. This works just like brining and helps the protein hold on to its moisture during cooking. Make sure to salt all sides and do this from above for even distribution. And yes, you're welcome to add some black pepper if you want. Let's put the fish on a plate, cover with plastic and put in the fridge. It's been an hour since we salted the fish, so it's time to preheat our grill. Turn all the burners on high heat. Don't worry about the mess left over from your previous meal. We'll cover it with foil and burn it all off before grilling. The foil traps the heat, making the grate a lot hotter. This results in a cleaner grill and less sticking. You can reuse the foil many times. Cover the grill and let preheat for 15 minutes. While the grill is preheating, let's make a glaze to put on our fish. The role of the glaze is to help the fish brown and to reduce sticking, but it is completely optional and you're welcome to just coat your fish with a thin film of oil. I'll start with a garlic clove. Let's peel it and grate it on a microplane zester to turn into a paste. This way it will dissolve instead of burning in little pieces. A dollop of Dijon mustard will give us the much needed acidity without much wetness. Water is the enemy of browning, so we want to avoid too many wet ingredients. A splash of soy sauce will give us umami boost. It also contains a bit of sugar that will speed up browning. Of course, the soy sauce is wet and should be used in moderation and balanced with a good bit of oil to avoid sticking. First mix the garlic, mustard and soy sauce with a fork. Then add two tablespoons of oil while mixing. I'm using grapeseed, but you can use any oil. At first, the mixture will separate, but if you keep mixing for a minute, it will become smooth and creamy. Emulsifying the wet ingredients into oil this way will help reduce sticking. Oh, and by the way, coating swordfish in mayo, which is also an emulsion, is not cheating. You're welcome to use it instead of this glaze. Let's dry the fish thoroughly with paper towels. Any surface moisture will glue the fish to the grill. Dry your plate too, since putting dry fish on a wet plate defeats the purpose of drying the fish. Coat each piece in a very small amount of glaze. I'm using roughly two teaspoons of glaze for eight ounces of fish. And turn the fish from side to side to distribute the glaze evenly. I'll cook just one piece for now and save the other ones for my dinner. You know the grill is hot enough when the ash on the grate turns white. Scrape it off with the grill brush, working quickly to avoid losing the heat. Give the grate a few bangs for the ash to fall through. Pour a bit of oil into a folded paper towel. I'm doing it over the grill to avoid moving the camera, but you shouldn't. Fold the towel so that the oil is facing out and brush the grill. The more passes you make, the more non-stick the grill becomes. For meat and vegetables, a couple of passes will do, but fish and fruit 
can stick. So for those, I'd recommend eight times. Again, work quickly not to lose much heat and only oil the area you'll need. Place the fish on the grill and close the lid. Cook just until the grill marks form, about two minutes. Slowly lift the fish and check for grill marks. If you have them, rotate the fish 90 degrees to get crisscross grill marks and cook for another minute. If the fish is not releasing, cook for another minute without disturbing and don't worry about crisscross grill marks. Lift the fish with tongues, slide a spatula under, flip to the other side and cook for another two to three minutes. We'll start checking for doneness when the total cooking time is six minutes per inch of thickness. Swordfish doesn't flake, so to test it for doneness we'll need to make a little cut. I'll borrow footage from my Swordfish Provencal video to show you doneness. The first few times, or if you're trying to show the inside to the camera, make a big cut. See how the center is still completely raw? Put it back together, give it five minutes of rest, and it will become perfectly opaque. A few more tips on doneness. If the fish is brown on both sides before it gets to this stage of doneness, lower the heat and continue cooking it, checking every minute. If, however, the fish is done and the second side is not quite brown yet, take it off the heat. On the second side, doneness trumps browning. The swordfish is a far cry from the fishy shoe leather so many people are used to. This one is butter soft and bursting with juice. If you want to make the grilled tomatoes, coat them in the same glaze as the fish. Grill until charred and sprinkle with salt. Next week, we are making the grilled asparagus tomato salad that's hiding under my swordfish here. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.